Our brain is a time machine. It alters the past to create alternate visions of the future, which is what animals do not do. Okay? Animals hibernate not because they say, oh, I'm getting tired, I want to hibernate. No, there's a gene in their brain that says time to hibernate. So you see, animals are done by instinct, while we do our motions on the basis of logic and thinking and simulating the future. How far is a monkey off of that, though? Uh, monkeys can do a little bit of that. They have a cerebral cortex that, of course, is, is not as developed as our cerebral cortex. But yeah, they also think about the future. They plan a little bit. But dogs, dogs, you cannot talk about the future to dogs. So I think that maybe in 100 years, I could be off, but maybe in 100 years, we'll have animals and robots that do simulate the future by themselves. Mm. They don't need a human to prompt them to simulate the future. At that point, they are potentially dangerous. How did you arrive, and you said you may be off because it, it is a prediction, obviously, but how do you arrive at like 100 years when you say that? Because you look at the progress of the past, and then you realize that we're going to be hitting a lot of roadblocks. For example, the, the fact that Moore's Law is going to collapse in, in the next coming decade. And you realize that quantum computers are still not really off the ground yet. Or they're not competitive in the open, on the open market yet. And so it'll take time. And even with quantum computers, you have to train it so that it begins to understand mm. its, its role and its uh, identity. Uh, you see, robots do not know they are robots. They have no self-awareness. You cannot go to, up to a chess playing machine and say, congratulations, you just, you just beat the world's greatest chess player. No, it just stands there and, and acts dumb. That's what machines do. They do one task and then they shut off, okay? We are sentient beings. We self-program, okay? We have the ability to plan the future and to understand our role in that simulation of the future. Animals aren't anywhere close to that. They don't simulate the future with their role in the future, Mm. We constantly obsess about this. This is what we call a college education. <laughs> what is a college education worth? It allows you to simulate different futures with you in it so that you can choose a destiny for yourself. We create our own destiny. Robots do not. Robots simply do what they're supposed to do. Now, as I said, I think it's only a matter of time before robots have some of this ability, self-awareness, the ability to simulate the future, and then watch out. I think maybe in 100 years, we should put a chip in their brain to shut them off if they have murderous thoughts, if they, de <laughs> if they decide that perhaps they should be in charge, not humans. But eventually, maybe in 200 years, and of course, this is just wild speculation, maybe in 200 years, robots will remove that chip. Robots will figure out how to remove the chip that constrains them so they cannot take over the world. At that point, what should we do? I think at that point, we should merge with them. <laughs> we should become supermen and superwomen and explore the universe as a cyborg. What does that look like? When it you means, say merge with them, like, do we, is this like the Matrix or like, what, what does it look like? No, not the Matrix, but be able to, uh, for example, the simplest thing to do is to have avatars. We control the avatars. We are in communication with the avatars. And the avatars go to the moon. They go to Mars. They explore the universe. And we sit comfortably in our beach house in Miami while our avatar goes out and explores the universe with our intelligence. Okay. Are we consciously experiencing that, though? Yeah, we are consciously experiencing the exploration of the universe. So my attitude is that in the future, we should merge with these creations of ours when we encounter a being in a flying saucer, we should not be surprised if we find out that they're not totally biological. They can be part uh, computerized, part mechanical, as well as part biological. So I think when we encounter aliens from outer space, we should not be surprised if we find out that they're not totally biological. How do you... All right, hold on. That's like melting my brain a little bit. So... Are you saying that there'd be a way for you to appear in physical form that you can touch and not put your hand through that wouldn't be biological? 
Yeah, I think that the future will explore the universe as part biological and part uh, computer. Uh, for example, it, let's take a look at the simplest example of this, which is immort digital immortality. Mm -hmm. um, as you probably heard, William Shatner from Star Trek sat in a chair for four days and was pestered with all these questions about his life, his history, his dreams, his hopes, his family, and so on and so forth. A computer then homogenized this, so put it in logical order, and you can talk to it now. In other words, he will live forever as a computer program that you can talk to. But he I doesn't would, really live forever, though. Th I, this is where I, this is where I divert. Why do right. you say he lives forever if it's just a computer that took the code of some of the bases of his brain and doesn't actually live in there and feel and touch and 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 have the human experience that he did? Well, it depends on how you define the word "you." Unfortunately, mm. in the English language, there's no variations on the concept of "you." You is just who you are organically. But in the future, we'll have the option will have the option of being in several, several different modes. And, for example, I would love to talk to Einstein. One day, somebody will digitize him, digitize all his, all his writings and film, uh, filming that he did and everything about the guy, and you'll be able to talk to him. So the library of the future, you'll be able to talk to Winston Churchill. Because all his, every, every reference to Winston Churchill will be digitized and you'll be able to talk to him. So in that sense, you can be digitized and talk to your great-great-great-great-grandchildren long after you're gone biologically, but you, you, the sum total of emotions, memories that, that you, you carry with you will be digitized and will be digitally immortal. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.